good afternoon. Back here in studio again for week six of the fall season. And we're talking sports with Val. Val, of course, joins me. Can't talk sports with Val with, without Val. How you doing? I'm doing great. We got some late updates just before the show. The Ken Hughes dinner is definitely on for next Friday, October 1st, from 4 until 7 p.m., $8. Okay. Uh, they'll be having it uh, uh, right around the field. Okay. Right around Barnhart Field, and I think uh, it's uh, yeah eight dollars. I think uh, pork sandwich and chips and a cookie and a drink. I think they have uh, what I see. They have a walk up option, and then they're also going to have a drive through kind of option as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Gates will open at five thirty, and the okay. game starts at seven. Okay, so that's good news. Yeah, that was uh, originally supposed to happen, obviously, before the Bell game last week, which didn't happen. So yeah. good to hear that that's going to still happen and. Mm -hmm can still come in and, and help out uh, yeah. Coach Hughes. Yeah. The other news is that Peru had said earlier in the week that they're not playing, but that might be changing. Yeah. Uh, they might get a game with South Bend, uh, South Bend Washington. Right. South Bend Riley is out. South Bend Riley was supposed to play South Bend Washington. Peru was supposed to play Rochester. Neither of those two games are happening. So I'm hoping Peru gets a game. I yeah. Mean, they, they're, they did absolutely nothing wrong to deserve to be sitting out this week. Right. Yeah, it was funny because I, I yelled out in the hall to you, uh, you know, I saw that, that information on Facebook and I didn't look at the comments and next thing I know I said, well, hey, you know, hey, now to talk to Peru and I looked at the comments and there was a guy who said they've been talking to Peru. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that'd be good if those two can get together and, and you know, for Peru that would be a probably a winnable game. Washington uh, probably be winnable for them. Yeah. So... That would keep them in the mix, and like you said, they didn't do anything wrong, so they, you know, they deserve to have a game. Right, and up until you know about 15 minutes ago, the only game that we knew of that was not going to be happening in the northern half of the state was that Rochester Peru game. Yeah, well, that's that's subject to change. You know, we saw what yeah. happened last last week, and uh, let's let's just start off as we talk. Uh, we're already talking about some football and. Uh, so the the two teams that came together last week that uh, you know came from cancellations from uh, you know Valley and Rochester game got canceled. So Valley needed a game. The Judson Winnemac game got canceled. So Judson needed a game, and it just worked out perfectly because Judson was playing homecoming. Valley was planning on being on the road. Hey, let's get together, and it turned out to be a really good game. Two four and O teams. Uh, coming together and and you know for uh, a one a team playing a three a team, uh, you know you can't complain. That was a really really good game and you know Valley ended up winning twenty six ten. But I think Judson you know proved some things there. Yeah, uh, this was the first time I'd seen Judson play in person in a couple of years and they are legit defensively. Mm -hmm. I mean they, you know they're disciplined and they don't miss tackles. And uh, number seventy five Brennan Benson, one of the three Bensons on that team, he is. He's a big, big, tough dude. I mean, he is. He's listed at six four, three hundred, and he, he's three hundred. There's no, there's no overhang. Uh -huh. He is just a big, big young man. He's not. He's not what a three hundred pound kid looked like in in ninety four when I graduated. No, 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 no. Yeah. And he, the Valley kids were like, they were, they were, they were. They gave him his props after the game. He was, he was tough, and they had to double team him. And they haven't had to double team many guys, especially mm -hmm. in that. And North Judson was kind of strategically moving Benson around the line to right. to see, kind of guessing where Valley was, you know, going on based on formation. I mean, they they didn't. It, it looked like North Judson didn't want Melanson and East Step on the right side of the line to be blocking him, so they they oftentimes lined him up on the left side of the line. And well, he could penetrate. I mean, he moved well. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a, for a big kid like that, so he he's tough and they're. You know they're out. Their linebackers are very good as well. That's a good North Judson team. I thought the key play was first two minutes of the game. North Judson decides to go for it fourth and one at their own thirty, and they don't get it. Yeah. DJ East up playing middle linebacker penetrated. He got some help from Jamison Virgil. Uh, looked like uh, Evan Mash maybe got in there well. It was a gang tackle on uh, uh, one of the other Bensons, um, and Valley took over on the thirty yard line, and then. On that drive, Valley converted a fourth down. I think it was like a fourth and five. Uh, Branson McBriar hit Wade Jones for a first down. That kept the drive going. And then on the next play, 15-yard touchdown run by Braden Shepard. And all of a sudden, within like three minutes, it's Valley 7 to nothing, And that was really the start that Valley needed. Mm -hmm. A lot of weapons, obviously, on that on that Valley team. And as you look down the, the roster for North Judson and... You know, a heavy dose of, of Cheyenne Allen in the, in the first half for Judson, but 
it seemed like maybe they tried to, you know, outthink yeah. the room, I guess, a little bit yeah. in the second half. That 65-yard punt return by, for a touchdown by Cheyenne Allen was brilliant. I oh, mean, that yeah. was incredible. If you saw it, and again, see the video uh, where he breaks, Wade, Wade Jones is not a bad tackler, and he just, yeah, you know. Popped his helmet off. Yeah, get off me, man. And, yeah. and he went in for the touchdown. Uh, but it seemed like North Judson tries to maybe balance their carries out between Owen Frazier, Quentin Frazier, and Cheyenne Allen. But uh, and, and they and they try to use Cheyenne Allen kind of similar in a way to the way Valley uses Braden Shepard. But maybe maybe North Judson just needs to get the ball to Cheyenne Allen more often. He is he is a big time athlete, big, fast, and strong. Yeah, I, I just thought maybe they went away from him a little bit more. That I I would have just you know until you stopped him, mm -hmm. he's gonna get the ball. Yeah, you know, and it just seemed like they kind of went away from that, and you know, I don't know. Sometimes coaches maybe try and outthink the room. They try and you know be smarter than everybody else on the field, and uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. You know, and and it seemed like Allen was working, and they just kind of went away from him. And you know, for for Valley, it just uh, you know they just have so many weapons coming at you. Right, and you know, you, you look at it, and the score at halftime was fourteen to seven. And J Valley was leading by seven, and Jameson Virgil had something like four yards of total offense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you shut down a great player like him, and you think, hey, we got a good chance. But North Judson was behind, and that was because of Braden Shepard. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had that 15-yard touchdown run, I think a 61-yard touchdown run. Mm -hmm. And that was just, he turned on the Jets down the left sideline. And, you know, then they get another, you know, in the second half, there was a 44-yard. It was a perfectly executed middle screen to Braden. And you get Braden in open space, and you are... You were asking for trouble, and you know it's it's not just the right. You know we we talked so much about the right side of the Valley offensive line. I thought the left side of the Valley offensive line with Noah Prater and Evan Mash they were terrific mm -hmm. last Friday, and that's that's another great sign. Yeah, you know really for both of those teams, they they really didn't have anything to lose. Uh, you know Valley winning the game obviously is is key to them. Mm -hmm. uh, Judson, I don't think anybody really you know expected them to win. Mm -hmm. I think they played very well and. You know, to play against a uh, top 10, 3A team like uh, Valley, like they did, I think is going to help them down the down the line. Yeah. Uh, and, and to play tough against them. And as they come down to the end, they've still got, you know, a, a good healthy uh, schedule in front of them as far as conference games goes, so, assuming that they can get them played. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think that's just going to help them as as they, you know, get those last four games in. Right, and I think with North, when you're, if, you know, North Judson plays Culver Academy, you know, uh, there this week. But ultimately in the big picture, it's going to come down to North Judson eventually meeting Winnemac at some point in the sectional, and whoever wins that game is probably going to win the sectional. Sure. Those two teams, in terms of both the rankings and the computer rankings, stand f well above the other six teams in that sectional. Sure. And, you know, that's going to be interesting to see, too. I mean, back-to-back -back against, uh, you know, a 3A and then a 4A school. And then coming down, they have uh, Triton. They go to Triton. They have LaVille and at Pioneer mm -hmm. for their last three games, all conference games. So, yeah. you know, they still have they still have a lot of, uh, a lot of football to play. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, for Valley, as they move into this week, they take on the 1-4 and four Whitco Wildcats at home. Uh... Honestly, should be a pretty easy one for the, for the Vikings. This is their homecoming. Uh, I don't see any letdowns for the for the Vikings. I think they just have too many weapons against a depleted Whitco team. Right, uh, Whitco is coming off a twenty one fourteen win over North Miami last week. Whitco had over two hundred fifty yards rushing in that game, so this is a sign that they're getting a little bit better. But this is a Valley defense that's a, a step above the North Miami defense, and we'll see if they can get it going. A step. Uh, yeah, a couple steps. Yeah. You know, one thing that about Valley's defense is their ability, I guess I need to see it to just to be reminded by it, but they're, they always play this way, is that, that gap control defense, they, they get in the backfield in a hurry, mm -hmm. and they break up your running plays before it really gets started. It, it kind of re reminds me of those Jimmy Johnson defenses with the Dallas Cowboys back in the early 90s, mm -hmm. if you're that old. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we're... Or even going, which he kind of invented back when he was the coach at Miami. Right. You know, he was from Miami back in the eighties, uh, late eighties, early nineties. So, uh, I mean, they get in the backfield quickly, and I mean, they just break up your running game before it even starts. The key is going to for Whitco is going to be Tyler Veach. He's got to have a big game. I was talking with Coach uh, Mori Stephen Moriarty earlier this week. He is good friends with Tyler Veach's father, Russ. Said, uh, you know, great kid and. 
he also thinks that Veach is going to be a big factor in this game on defense mm-hmm. uh, from the linebacker spot. He, uh, they might blitz a lot, and if they blitz, it's going to be Veach who's going to try and get in there and try to disrupt Branson McFryer. Yeah, but you blitz that uh, Valley team, and they've got the weapons if, if you don't risk. get to them. Right, and you know <laughs> they've got all right. You better get to them because if Valley runs that screen pass. I mean, they run it really well. Mm-hmm. And you know they've also got you know Kirkenstein and Jones uh, on the perimeter at wide receiver. Yeah, a lot of weapons if you don't get to them. So they have uh, they have Wicko coming up. Wicko coming in at one and four. Valley of course five and zero. Oh. Right. And Valley stays stayed at number nine in this week's poll, but basically there wasn't a whole lot of movement. Only one of the eight teams ahead of them last week lost. Okay. And that was Tri West, and they moved from number three to number seven. So there wasn't a whole lot of shuffling in the poll. I I know I've been. I know I always pound the table for our local teams. You know with the, with the rankings and yeah. the weirdness sometimes, but I think I think Valley is where they should be. Yeah, yeah. So uh, far, yeah. Worth noting, Mishawaka Marion started zero and two, another three and two. Mm-hmm. Big game at home on Friday against Penn. Penn still uh, winless. Penn got a win last week. They, they beat El- they beat Elkhart at Elkhart mm-hmm. and beat them thirty one to three. So whatever was wrong with Penn. They seem to have figured it out. Maybe they were. I mean, they were playing some really, really right. good teams from out of state. So Penn and Mishawaka Marion should be interesting. Mishawaka Marion beat Penn at Penn last year. So yeah. now they get them at home this year. We will see a lot about Mishawaka Marion again. They they did graduate. You know, some key pieces. They got some key pieces back, but I mean, they graduated their quarterback. And so uh, we're keeping an eye on Mishawaka Marion. Valley's ranked number nine. Mishawaka Marion's ranked number eleven. Mm-hmm. And the computer polls seem to think there it's kind of a coin flip right now between those two. Right. And Jim Towns right number sixteen, they're kind of lurking down there too. Right. Jim Towns playing really good defense, not scoring a whole lot of points, but playing really good defense. Yeah. So the uh, the zebras obviously were off last week. They're going to be off again this week for uh, Winnemac. They were off last week, but they are uh, scheduled to come back and play. They're going to be taking on Culver, who comes in at one and two. Winnemac three and zero. Oh, they've been off for two weeks themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Culver coming off of a, uh, a tough loss, twenty four thirty five against Triton. They had the lead at the half, and it was pretty much all Triton in that second half. And I say all Triton, it was it was all Shoe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Shively at quarterback and Shoe. You talked yeah. about them last week. Shively threw three touchdown passes. Yeah, you talked about them last week, and I didn't really understand. Mm-hmm. Maybe I was mm-hmm. kind of overlooking what you were saying about mm-hmm. them and watching them play. They they're good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're really good, and they're both just sophomores. So mm-hmm. that Triton team, you know, they're going to be a handful for a few years. I talked with Culver coach Mike Zayner earlier in the week, and he talked about turnovers. Culver had two turnovers, Triton had none, mm-hmm. and that was really big. Remember, Culver's, a lot of their game is about just taking the air out of the ball mm-hmm. and not letting your offense get on the field. Well, if you're committing a couple turnovers and you're not, get, you're not getting some takeaways on defense, then your whole game is kind of turning against you. You know, your, your objective is being turned on its head, and especially when Culver relies on these long possessions. So mm-hmm. when Culver commits two turnovers, it's like another team committing five, it seems like. Yeah, and, and Triton made them pay for both uh, yeah. turnovers. They fumbled it on the 35, and they ended up getting back in the end zone. Then they uh, the next possession, they had an interception, and it was run back to the 17. And then uh, starting the fourth quarter, the first play of the fourth quarter, touchdown pass to the corner of the end zone. One play, touchdown for Triton, mm-hmm. and, and you know, it was pretty much over from there. You know, Culver did get another touchdown in the fourth quarter, but mm-hmm. it was a nine-minute drive. Yeah, I mean, it took almost all of the right. fourth quarter. It's not a quick strike offense, so yeah. when they fall behind by you know ten, fourteen points, it's it's yeah. that's a big deficit for them. Yeah. Um, you know, Shane Schumann ran for over a hundred yards. He was a big factor again on defense. I talked with Winnemac coach John Hendricks, and he talked about how Schumann is just a big factor on both sides of the ball as mm-hmm. a fullback and as a linebacker. But the key, uh, the guy who really uh, really kind of had his coming out party was Jason Cadel. Yeah. 68-yard touchdown run, mm-hmm. and he had 89 yards rushing for the game. And that gives him yet another weapon to go with Blake Thompson and Emiliano Ortiz and Schumann. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a good sign that... Uh, and then, uh, you know, the passing game with Marquez Anderson, I mean, he's going to be a factor too. So yeah. Culver's... Moving the ball is not a problem. I, mean, I think they had more total yards than Triton in that game. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was interesting. I, you know, I was talking with Mike Zaner, and he... He talks with um, Coach uh, Dave Sharp, 
who's the, the head coach at Noblesville. Mm-hmm. He used to be the head coach at John Glenn and Laporte. Mm-hmm. Why does Mike Zander talk with the head coach of Noblesville every week? Well, they're, Noblesville also runs the Power T offense. They're the only two teams in the state who run that same offense. Mm-hmm. And uh, who, okay, we know that, okay, we're, we're going to go on a little tangent here. We've talked about Alex Deming this year. He's He was first in the state in rushing. Now he's second, even though he didn't play last week. Right. Uh, the kid from New Prairie Pass. Well, the guy who's third in the state is a, a kid named Schaffner, who is the fullback from Noblesville. Okay. He's got over 1,000 yards as well, and he is listed as something like 5'6", 135. He's a tiny kid, hmm. but he plays fullback in the Noblesville offense, and apparently Sharp was telling Zaner, he goes, we got this kid Schaffner. He doesn't look like a typical fullback, but we send him on the trap, and he hits that hole so hard that he gets big yards. He's averaging 11 yards a carry. Yeah. And that gave Zaner some ideas. Why don't we put Kano at the fullback spot right. and send him th- on, the, on that trap play? And that was, I think the 68-yard run was on a trap. Right. Yeah. So that's interesting how that whole of that all, how all that evolved in Zaner's mind with that conversation with the coach Dave Sharp from Noblesville. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, pretty impressive, and he gives them a you know a quick strike ability because mm-hmm. you know he he may not be very big, but obviously very very fast. Mm-hmm. And, you know he was he was down there in a hurry. So yeah, yeah, the the turnovers really hurt, and obviously Triton scoring off of those turnovers hurt even worse. And uh, it just, yeah, you, like you said, you can't fall behind by mm-hmm. multiple scores when you're a Culver because mm-hmm. it just takes you so long to get down the field. They have, you know, a great offense. If if you're ahead, mm-hmm. you know, they, they can keep getting first downs, keep getting first downs. Yeah. But uh, when you fall behind by a couple scores, it, it really is darn near impossible for them to come back. Right. They, they've got to, if, if they want to beat Winnemac at Winnemac, they've got to get a takeaway on defense, at least one or probably multiple turn or multiple takeaways. Meanwhile, from Winnemac's standpoint, I talked with Coach John Hendricks early in the week. He said, we're as healthy as we've been all year. Still one kid out on a quarantine, but everybody else was back at practice this week, so they should be ready to go. And one thing that he talked about when he talked about preparing to face Culver is that he knows that Culver's a different type of offense, that mm-hmm. they they see different. The, the, the defenses that they see are going to be, whatever Coach Zaner scouts for, it's, it's not doesn't mean a whole lot because Culver's offense is you know, so unique, so team kind of pack the line defensively so it, it's an interesting kind of cat and mouse game and again Culver doesn't vary their formations they got one tight end on each side of the center mm-hmm. so there's no strong or weak side it's a balanced line every play so there's there's no pattern to anything mm-hmm. and coach Hendricks goes we're watching film and you know sometimes you know Thompson will get the ball two or three carries in a row and then sometimes Schumann will get the ball three or four carries in a row then they'll go away from Schumann and then they'll go back to Schumann again and there's there's no so it's 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 just hard to predict because it's the same formation and you don't know who's going to get the ball and then on the same t- at the same time you got to follow the ball, which is so hard because they're all foot to foot and there's a lot of, mm-hmm. you know the it, it, you know the Tucker Fisher kind of crouched low and it's hard to see where the ball is sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I think the one thing that they have that they didn't have in, in years past too is that little bit of an op- option uh, to pull that back and go over the top to mm-hmm. uh, to Marquez. Uh, yeah, you know, and they they actually had a really nice play. Uh, it looked like he may have just dropped it. It kind of went through his hands a little bit. It was a nice throw from Fisher, that really would have made a huge difference for them. I think it was in the third mm-hmm. quarter, and uh, so you know they do have a little bit of a of a throwing option, and I mean they don't do it very often, but if they can you know draw in that they get 10 11 guys in the box, mm-hmm. you know you go over top. You got Anderson, who's you know probably six two six three. You can get him over the top. Yeah, and meanwhile, the Culver defense—they've got to stop Hayden Clark somehow. I mean, he has just been—he's he, kind of their go-to guy, mm-hmm. and to me, and maybe force, maybe try. And they've also got to kind of keep Russell Compton in the pocket somehow. They got to contain him because if he gets outside in the pocket, I mean, he can be dangerous. He, I mean, th- there will be some design runs for him. He, there might be, even be some waggle type plays. So. Uh, you know, Culver's got to limit the big plays defensively, but that that's kind of been an, an issue for them. Yeah, you know, you got Winnemac coming in two and zero in conference, obviously missing the last two games, but yeah, they moved up from number five to number four in the polls, even though they haven't played. Even though they haven't played, uh, they got Culver yeah. at home, uh, conference games. They've got Culver at home, Caston at home, and Triton at home. So you know, they've they've still got three more conference games, but they're all at home, 
And I would say, you know, that, that Triton game at the end is looking pretty uh, interesting if the Trojans can keep going. Right, and again, we get to look ahead. Sure. Coaches can't look ahead. We should note, though, the last two times Culver and Winnemac have played at Winnemac, Culver's won. Right. Including a game, I think it was two years ago, when Split. Uh, they, they finished the game on a Saturday because right. of uh, lightning. lightning at mm -hmm. halftime. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... That was uh, that was the same night that Triton was playing at Pioneer, and they ended up going home at the half because of the lightning, and just said, "Okay, we're done." Yeah, yeah. So, so Culver has made themselves at home at Rada Bush Field, so we'll see if they can keep it up. Yeah, we'll have that one on uh, Winnemac TV, Culver TV for you. Pioneer last week, you know, they started off. You talk about um, starting off zero and two, like uh, Mishawaka Marion. Pioneer started off zero and two. They won three in a row. All three of those games, you know, on the road, mm -hmm. and they come in. Uh, well, no, they weren't. The last last week was at home, so sorry. But uh, anyway, they beat Hammond Central five A school. You know, we we knew Hammond wasn't the strongest five A school, but still a five A school. Yeah, forty six nineteen. Now they have uh, Triton coming in to the pit this week, and you know Triton's coming in three and two. They've got some confidence off of a couple of big wins, and uh, you know this this might be a Probably the best Triton Pioneer game that we've seen in a few years. Yeah, yeah. I talked with Coach Adam Barry earlier in the week, and he, uh, you know, they played. I think he liked how fast and physical they played mm -hmm. against Hammond Central. And one thing I noticed: Caden Hill is now playing running back. I think he had over ninety yards rushing against mm -hmm. Hammond Central, and he had two interceptions on defense. Yeah. So he is. Um, you can see his. He's making more of a contribution. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just Brock Robinson anymore. Toloza has been playing great. Brock Robinson has been playing great. Caleb Sweet is now this big time receiving threat. All of a sudden, he's yeah. gone from being a left tackle to being this yeah. pass Changed catching number type. and yeah. put him on the yeah yeah. Uh, so he's gone for yeah. It's like putting number forty is like putting the Superman costume on. He's, yeah, uh, you know he's he's uh, he's been great, and so the offense is really uh, humming along, and, and and they're they're back to playing the kind of at that fast fast-paced tempo and I think they kind of wore him and Central out last week in the by the fourth quarter mm -hmm. so that's a great sign now with Pioneer playing Trident it's kind of like a mirror image of each other in a little bit I mean both of them are wing T type mm -hmm. offenses so we'll see if Pioneer maybe has an advantage of having seen kind of that off the defense has seen that offense in practice every day Derek Legrand is playing some tremendous football I mean he is everywhere and he is in your backfield at all times mm-hmm the the defense for Pioneer has never been in question mm -hmm. this entire year. Yeah. It, but once they got Robinson back and they kind of right. moved those pieces around, uh, the offense has yeah. been going on all, all cylinders. Right. Coach Bian Coach Bianco and Coach Barry and their the defensive staff kind of had to adjust on the fly last week because uh, Huber, who was Hammond Central's starting quarterback, who had played really great the previous week, uh, didn't play against Pioneer. We don't know why. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, Hamilton looked like they were rotating in. They think different quarterbacks. I think three different guys threw a pass in that game, so they kind of had to make some adjustments on the fly. Uh, now they face an offense that looks pretty familiar to them. Yeah. But well, again, you know, we were just talking about Shu and Shively. We'll see if Pioneer can can hem them in. Yeah. And Irvine, the Irvine, the wide receiver for Trident, he's been big of late. Yeah. I was uh, like I said, I was really impressed. Get to see them again this week down at Pioneer and uh, for Caston. You know, they, they started off with that West Central win. They've had uh, some struggles over the last four games. I kept watching the score as I was up there at Culver. I kept watching the score, and, and they hung with Laville yeah. through that first half. But I, I don't really know. I didn't get a chance to watch that second half. Laville just kind of ran yeah. away with it. They were down 20. Yeah, I mean, Caston scored first. They were up 6 nothing. Laville at 20-6 to six at halftime. And then Laville scored 22 points in the third quarter. Uh, I Def you know, uh, Landon Schaefer moved back to quarterback, and I think he, he did a nice job. He, you know, 79 yards passing is a lot in that offense, and it's an, it was enough to keep the LaVille defense off balance a little bit, and both um, Grant Hickel and Sam Smith had over 80 yards rushing, but they couldn't get the LaVille offense off the field, and they couldn't. And so it, right now, really, the main issues are defensively and how do they how do they stop their opponent, and now they face a North White team. I mean, you know, Paul DeWitt had a huge game for Lavelle, mm -hmm. and Plummer had a nice game. 
Uh, but that was a Lavelle offense that, frankly, had been struggling a little right. bit. Now they face a North White team that's averaging 34 points a game. Yeah. And, you know, all of a sudden North White comes in at 2-1. and one. So, right. you know, it, at the beginning of the year you would have thought, okay, that's probably a very winnable game for Caston, but... You know, right, right now it, it could be uh, it could be a really tough game. I mean, you look at that sophomore quarterback for North White, Eli Quasbarth. I mean, he's he's pretty good. He's mm-hmm. pretty you know they can get him out. You know, he's not the biggest kid, but they can get him outside the pocket. You know, they might have some more waggle type passes and get him outside the packet, pocket pocket to throw the ball. And uh, the other guy they got to watch out for is that Jeffrey Stevens. We've seen him play basketball before. He's a big kid, six four, two thirty. Mm-hmm. They got to block him somehow. If they can block him. And create holes, and they can get the running game going. But he, that won't be easy. Right. I mean, he, he's a he's a force for them on the defensive line. One of their, yeah. he's one of their captains. Yeah. So Caston going to be on the road at North White. Yeah, one of those old school uh, Midwest yeah. Conference rivalries. They've played a lot of big. They played a lot of close games with, against each other in the past. Sure. Um, so as we look down the uh, TRC and the Hoosier North Conference standings going into Week Six. Valley uh, stands on top of the TRC at three and zero. Rochester Mid Pack there, there they've got the one loss. You've got Northfield at three and one, Peru at three and one, Southwood three and one, and then Rochester at two and one. Obviously, they've missed a couple weeks. Uh, McConaughey and Manchester both one and two. Whitco one and three. Wabash and North Miami both winless in conference. Wabash has only played two. North Miami has played four. Uh, you know, Valley, as you look down the, the remainder of their schedule, they got Wicca home, they're at Manchester, at Wabash, and then the big game, obviously, to finish the season off at home against Southwood. Uh, right, and Southwood... Looking like they might be able to run it. Southwood beat Wabash 47 to nothing last week. This Southwood team looks like they are peaking. Yeah, and... Or, or peaking at the right time. Right, and they have that one loss to, to Northfield, so... Uh, for Rochester, you know, they've got Northfield not this week, but next week. Uh, Northfield team's looking pretty good. And, uh, you yeah. know, you've got Rochester coming off of two weeks off. You know, that could be interesting. And then they go to North Miami and then finish off the season at home versus McConaughey. Right. I'm interested to see the McConaughey sophomore quarterback, Burner. He has been, he had a game against Whitco where he threw six touchdown passes, uh, but Peru held, him, Peru held him in check a little bit last week, beat him. Beat McConaughey forty-eight twenty. Yeah, wish we could have seen that Peru Rochester. I, I I really think that would have been a really good game this I, week. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, not going to happen. So hopefully uh, everything will work out, and we'll be back at home next week with Rochester versus Northfield. Uh, Who's your North Conference standings? Uh, Judson stands at three and zero. Winnemac two and zero. Uh, those teams both undefeated. Winnemac, um, right? Again, the Winnemac Jetson game. I mean, that's a great rivalry game every year, but it would certainly have appeared that that game would have decided the conference this year as well. Right. Uh, you know, for Jetson, they got at Triton, their home against Laville, and then they finish off at Pioneer. So I'm very curious. The Jetson Pioneer game will be a good game. I'll be interested to see what the Pioneer coaching staff does to try to hem in Cheyenne Allen. Right. Uh, Judson at Calder Academy this week. Those last three were just the conference games I put down. So uh, at Triton, uh, that should be an interesting game for Judson. And then finishing off at Pioneer, they've got a they got a tough little road the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. I mean, a couple tough games on the road, and then they got Laville, who uh, you know if they can get their offense going, their defense has been solid. And yep. you know, Winnemac finishes off uh, with Culver, Caston, and Triton all at home. So uh, there's a road game in there, uh, in between there, I think, but uh, a non-conference game. Uh, Laville two and one, Pioneers uh, sitting right there two and one, Triton sitting there two and one. So that Pioneer Triton has a lot of conference implications in it, both sitting at two and one. Culver Knox and Caston all zero oh and two, zero oh and two, and then Caston zero oh and four in the conference. Mm-hmm. So we're, uh, gosh, I tell you, it's. Moving right down the the line, you know, week six already, and you know, as we uh, get going, we've got about two weeks, I think, until uh, selection Sunday, right? Yeah, uh, the draw is Sunday, October tenth, yep. at five p.m. Okay. Well, anything else football wise you want to talk about? No, yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, Alex Deming is now second in the state in rushing. Yeah. Uh, Noah Mungia of New Prairie has moved up to the number one spot, but. Alex is still second. Still second, and he missed that rushing game. for zero yards last week. Right. Not bad. 
Definitely still the leads in uh, yards per game. Leads in yards per game. Yeah. And averaging nine yards a carry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you have a couple of 60 plus yard runs, that, you know, really gets that yards per yeah. carry up. Yeah. So he'll be back next week. Get a chance to see him against Northfield. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. More talking sports with Val here in a moment. Thanks for tuning in. In your true value has everything you need to get your next project done. Located on Main Street in Rochester, Inyard's True Value has the product to get the job done. From tools and supplies to kitchen appliances, Inyard's True Value has got you covered. Call 574-223-4920 or visit www.truevaluecompany.com. The Innocence of Youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends, how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 160,000 participants here in Indiana who take part in high school sports. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer a wide selection of valuable services for our customers. We offer a variety of deposit products, such as personal and business accounts. We pride ourselves in being one of the top mortgage lenders in Indiana. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer business loans and business checking accounts. Give us a call at any one of our branch locations and let us help you. Through LPL Financial, our financial services department is here to help you with your financial planning needs. Come see us today and see how our family can help your family. Right, welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val. We went through football for week six, and as we move down the uh, down the line, we'll talk some volleyball here in this segment, and we'll talk some boys and girls soccer as well, and then come back for segment number three with our uh, uh, cross country, tennis, and uh, girls golf, and finish things off. So um, let's start off uh, with the Rochester Zebras volleyball. Uh, you know, ever since that. Uh, little conference they had in the in the parking lot at Rochester High School they've uh, just come on and been on fire and won three in a row conference games and they just seem to have maybe uh, put some things together yeah Lexi Thomas called it a come to Jesus moment <laughs> yeah uh, in the parking lot after the Manchester match but yeah it, it didn't look like a Rochester volleyball team against Manchester and these last three matches, they've looked much more like this is the way this team should be playing. And playing with a lot more, it just goes to show you how important confidence is in high school volleyball and in high school sports in general. And, you know, we saw them play, you know, I saw them play against Peru. We both saw them play against McConaughey the other mm-hmm. night, which they dominated. I thought a pretty they good, really did. Yeah. pretty good, pretty experienced McConaughey team that mm-hmm. was loaded with seniors and beat them in three. And uh, the ball just doesn't fall on Rochester side of the court that much these mm-hmm. days. And... You look at the aces, you know, Rochester had eight aces and McConaughey had two. Mm-hmm. Last three matches, Rochester's had 35 aces and their opponents have had four. Well, that was the one thing you were talking yeah. about in the pregame was mm-hmm. the service part of their game. And, boy, you know, from that Southwood game, which was the last time I had seen them, till yeah. McConaughey, till that game, man, they just, it looked like a different team on the service line. Right. When they were just kind of lollipopping balls back and Southwood was almost putting every serve where they wanted to mm-hmm. and now almost things things have almost taken turned a total 180 i mean it's yeah. now they're getting everything up kylie houston's playing great riley holloway had nine digs and we i don't know if we talked about her as much as we should have she, yeah you know, she's playing great emma sells had some great digs mm-hmm. even emily hughes had some some really nice digs so yeah they're just not letting the ball fall on the other side of the floor that's a good way to win volleyball matches yeah. and also the offensive variety as well yeah. I mean, it's not just it's not ju- Emily Hughes obviously lived them in kills again, but yeah. it's not just her, Lexi Thomas, Kylie Coleman. Uh, it's been a lot of girls from and from a lot of different shots too. Yeah, well, and I think too if you look at that Southwood, there you know Kylie just got back. You didn't have Emma Sells. You didn't have uh, Lexi. Uh, you didn't have I think Holloway played, but she was kind mm-hmm. of limited. I don't know what was what was going on there. So to have everybody kind of back and, and in rhythm and, and on the same page, and boy, Emily is just serving. I mean, we were just raving about her serves against McConaughey. She had 
everything in the bag and yeah. they, they were all working i mean yeah you know, this I, way this way this way this way i mean everything different speeds yeah i asked lexi about that she goes we see that in practice all the time we could just we just get embarrassed i mean sometimes it spins sometimes it doesn't spin sometimes yeah. it's coming it drops straight down sometimes it, it's coming almost like right at your face i mean it's just yeah what she had 19 in a row in that first set yeah I yeah. mean, it's just crazy. Yes, yeah, seven aces for the match. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, she was just yeah, and and she had another long serving run on the third set as well. Yeah. It wasn't near as long as that, but I think it was still what nine. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. So I mean. Right, and remember they were down five zero in the third set, mm -hmm. and then they went on a thirteen to two run to go thirteen to seven. Yeah. And. So they yeah. they seem to have things, and I talked about it after you uh, left there on. Uh, that game mm -hmm. in the post game, you know, two losses in conference. I mean, stranger things have happened. Yeah. I mean, it's still, right. there's still a long ways to go. They're probably going to win out yeah. in the conference. They still have to play North Miami, Valley, and Whitco. Mm -hmm. But they're all winnable. All three of those are winnable. Yeah. Um, they've got to, you know, they'll have to show up. I mean, all three of their, and if they keep playing the way they've been playing, they help themselves out a lot. Now, they also have to play, uh, yeah, they also play Wabash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next so. week. So four four conferences, yeah. Wabash, Wabash North yeah. Miami, Wabash, Valley, and Whitco. So right. uh, Wabash is young but talented. Mm -hmm. uh, they're right. They're going to be right there. They're, they're meeting them at their place is not going to be easy. I mean, they, you're going to be spending a lot of time with the bus over the next week. They are at right. North. You know, we're taping this on Thursday afternoon. They're at North Miami Thursday night. So you, if you're watching this at home, you probably know the outcome of that. But that's that's at North Miami. Then they go to the Warsaw Invite on Saturday. Then they're right back on the bus Monday night at Lewis Cass, and they're right back on the bus Tuesday night at Wabash. I mean, that's a busy schedule. Mm -hmm. But uh, not a lot of time at the friendly confines of Rochester High School either. Right. I mean, these these last three have all been at home, so mm -hmm. now they get to they get to show that they can keep up this level of play on the road. Yeah. Because they, I mean, they they've struggled on the road. I mean, yeah. They, but if they can, they're they're going to be sitting in really good shape come you know about ten days from now. Yeah. Yeah. So and uh, you know whether. Whether the conference thing works out or not, it doesn't matter per se really at the end because, uh, you know, obviously the big thing is can they go up to Bremen and mm -hmm. do what they've done the last two years and get a, a sectional. And South Central is just playing great volleyball right now. They've only lost once all season. Now they mm -hmm. haven't played the type of schedule that Rochester has. Mm -hmm. Not by any means. They haven't. If South Central played Pioneer. I mean, yeah. they might maybe say something different, but they haven't played the schedule that Rochester has. So. It would be interesting if, to see if they would run into each other at the sectional. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, right now the computer polls say that South Central and Rochester are by far the two best teams in that sectional, with Bremen, LaVille, Westville, and South Bend Career Academy hoping to catch up. Yeah. Well, I, I did see South Central had a big win against Morgan Township. I don't know you know, what Morgan yeah. Township is doing, but they usually have decent right. squad. So. South Central also beat Griffith, you know, 3, 3 yeah, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they're peaking at the right time. If they can continue uh, with, you know, the momentum that they've gotten off these last three matches, then, you know, who knows what they can do. Right. We should mention Kennedy Leap. She's also been a force offensively as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, some contributions from the, from the younger kids as well. You mm -hmm. know, Bullingers just continued to, uh, to do well. You saw uh, a little bit of... Uh, um, my mind just went blank. Lily Lett, we Lily saw Lett, her. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, coming in and, and doing some, some good things as well. So they're getting some contributions across the board. The seniors yeah. are kind of leading the way, but the, the younger kids are really taking note. Yeah, I mean, Kenzie Bradley, I mean, they've all stepped it up. Kenzie Bradley's been playing well. You know, Lexi's playing through an injury. I asked her about her injury. She said, no, it still hurts. And yeah. she goes, I, when, when I wake up in the morning, it, I feel it. But hmm. yeah, but she's she's playing through it, and she I mean she looked she looked good the other night. I mean I yeah, she was I would have I would have never said it was still bothering her. Yeah, she said yeah. it was very spry in her. In fact, she's kind of suspect that it might need to be repaired surgically. But oh, when wow. she'll have time to do that, right. might have to wait until after basketball season. Yeah. Well, and that was one of the comments that I made. I don't know if it was on or off the air. Uh, how fast they were getting off the floor. Not yeah. only are they getting up there, but they were getting off the floor really quick. And yeah, I th I think the communication. You know, the the one thing that impressed me against McConaughey that they struggled with against Southwood so much was out of system plays. Mm -hmm. uh, they were able to function through those out of system plays better, I thought, against McConaughey. 
And meanwhile, I thought McConaughey really struggled when they were out of system. Mm-hmm. And, you know, McConaughey seemed to be kind of limited, too. They were always kind of attacking from that left side. Yeah. Which kind of was a little predictable for the Zebras able to uh, kind of set up the block and then set up the return. And yeah. So there wasn't a lot of variety there where you saw on the Rochester side they were attacking from both sides of the net and through the middle. Right, and you can even when the block wasn't... Say, again, we have stats for everything, but it's hard to sometimes quantify how often the block can maybe intimidate a hitter on the opposing team to maybe hit around the block or hit wide or spray mm-hmm. it wide because they don't want to get near the get near the block and they wind up either you know pumping it into the net or hitting it yeah. nowhere near where they want near where they want to put it. Yeah. So uh, let's talk uh, Tipping Valley volleyball. Up and down lately. I mean, they they went two and one at home in their home round robin on Saturday. And they, you know, they go to Northwood and they lose in three on Monday, and they didn't get more than eleven points in any of those three sets. They, Northwood was dominating. That's a really good Northwood team, a young Northwood team too. They graduated a lot, and a lot of people didn't know what they had. Well, they're they're right there in the NLC near the end, top of the NLC. And of course, Northwood's a conference. Northwood's a sectional opponent for Valley as well. And then Valley bounces back and gets a nice win over Culver on Tuesday night. Uh, you know, Valley hosts Northfield on Thursday. Again, Valley's still undefeated in conference. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, they still control their own destiny. Uh, but the tough part of their schedule starts now. Right. Again, this is a young Northfield team. Uh, there's another, there's a freshman Baker. I don't know if she's related to uh, Addie Baker, but this is a young Baker. So, it's a pretty young team. Uh, Holmes, Hannah Holmes is a sophomore. But uh, you'd have to think Valley would be favored at home in that they still got to play Southwood, Wabash, and Rochester, and those last right. three will be tough. Yeah. They still got the meat of their schedule to come. Yeah. Right. Um, and as we move over into our HNAC teams, um, you know, we got uh, Pioneer um, coming off of a, a bit of a tough weekend. They went to uh, to Leo and got beat around a little bit. And Coach Nyes, uh, I think, had his own little come to Jesus with his team the other night. Yeah. It, it, it didn't last an hour, though. It lasted no. about, what, 10 seconds? If that. Yeah. But uh, apparently it worked. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he, he didn't... I talked with Coach Nyes after the North Jets match. He didn't want to say what he said. He said it was confidential. Mm-hmm. But there was a greater point to it. And mm-hmm. there was, you know, we're getting close now to the draw and to sectionals, and we're going to have to narrow down uh, the rotations here. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to... You know, you're going to have to earn your playing time, and I think that was a greater, that was the greater message involved there. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, obviously he, you know, it looks like a genius move to take them out of when they win the next twelve points. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, the the bigger point was, uh, we can't stand for what happened over the weekend at Leo because he said, he said we were we were heading back into those same bad habits, mm-hmm. and they kind of turned things around after that run and they continued it for the rest of the match um you know brooklyn borges i think she's really stepped up her game this year yeah. mandy weisenberger and of course Haley cry is somebody you can right. count on always but uh you know i, I think he the, the, but the bigger point was okay it's time to get serious we're not experimenting anymore mm-hmm. i mean you've got to earn your playing time yeah and i, I think that they were maybe experimenting in the first place but he was being, I think, open-minded about how he was doling out playing time, mm-hmm. and now it's to the point where you've got to earn your playing time. Right. And you, you see that with, with you know, NBA teams. You see that with everybody as they get down into those postseason games. You know, the, mm-hmm. the lineup gets smaller and smaller. And, mm-hmm. You know, and instead of going 8, 9, 10 deep, you're, you're going maybe 7 or 8 deep at the most yeah. and kind of working on those rotations and... Right, because and and last year the way it worked out, I mean, the road, you know, things got narrowed down as mm-hmm. the season went on. There were just, you know, I mean, there were a whole bunch of girls who played, you know, and even if you look at that that epic, I still think back to that sectional final against Northfield. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, how many times Joe Walker had to stick her nose in there from the back row? I mean, she was unbelievable in that match. Mm-hmm. But it's just, yeah, I mean. There were there's there are fewer fewer and fewer subs as things go along. Yeah, and 
you know, it just, uh, I think maybe the one thing that they're still trying to, to figure out is, you know, who's going to be the center. You know, they, they've got three girls that mm -hmm. can do it. Down the, down the line, you know, who's going to be that number one setter? Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's completely answered yet. I yeah. think there's still some question on that. Right. Pioneer's really good at getting, Pioneer's offense is a little more, the way Pioneer runs their offense is a little different from, say, the way Rochester runs their offense. They, you know, the setter, there's a lot of responsibility on the setter. It's mm -hmm. not an easy job in the Pioneer system. Right. And I thought, you know, in that Judson game, I thought they looked really good when, when Grigsby was, was setting. And then you had um, Borges, and then you also had... Um, boy, my, my Weisenberger? Was, no, the oh. other uh, setter. Uh, nice. The other one. Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> so Rogers was actually doing a little mm -hmm. uh, front row stuff there. And mm -hmm. so you had Borges and Rogers kind of doing, mm -hmm. you know, playing a little in that front row. And and then uh, Grigsby, and then sometimes Nice. So, you know, where they where they end up on that, you know, that's obviously up to Coach Nice, but I guess it's it's a good problem to have, to have three of them that you know mm -hmm. can do it, but uh, at this point you got to kind of narrow that down and figure out who's the one that's going to be the one. Right. Uh, now the schedule's coming up. It's going to be heavy on conference matches. Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking to you on Thursday afternoon. They're playing Winnemac Thursday night at Winnemac. And they still have to go to LaVille on Monday night, and they host Triton on Tuesday night. So three conference matches in a six-day span. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, so, I mean, they're still 4-0 in conference. I, I, hope we're, I hope we're not painting a negative picture. They're, this right. is still a really good volleyball team right. that has high hopes. But uh, Well, I, I think it's just one of those things that you expect so much from them that you know, we're looking past and looking into that you know, sectional slash regional and beyond. And when you win 15 sectionals in a row as a coach, you've obviously proven that you know when to get your how to get your team prepared sure. for the postseason. But he's done it before. Yeah, but uh, Tom Finical has won what 20 plus sectionals at 23 sectionals at Southwood. Mm. He's done it before as well. Right. And it would the sectionals at Southwood this year, and I figure that the Lady Panthers and the Lady Knights will be meeting at some point there, right. and whoever wins that is going to be the favorite to take home the trophy. Right. Though some folks at Casta might disagree. Right. Right. It'll be an interesting sectional. The draw, obviously, is going to be huge. The draw is going to be Sunday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And I imagine if you're a Pioneer fan, you want Caston to draw Southwood in the first round. <laughs> and if you're a Caston fan, you want Pioneer to draw, draw Southwood, Southwood in the first, first round. round. Right, right. Well, we'll see where that goes. Mm -hmm. I do want to give a quick shout-out to the Pioneer JV. I've got a you know daughter on the team, and it uh, they went to Harrison mm -hmm. on Saturday, went 4-0, and knocking off uh, Harrison in the third set or the third match in three sets after losing the first set they came back and they won set two and then they won set three that was probably one of the best uh, matches uh, JV or varsity that I've seen competitive wise all season it was it was really good we've got a lot of good young players in our area mm -hmm. I'm some of the Rochester kids mm -hmm. uh, Valley Avery Wagner and McKaylee Costello yeah We've got a lot of good young volleyball players in our area. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Culver, on that. Culver's Bryn Barrett. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Culver's JV. I mean, they mm -hmm. they knocked off Pioneers JV. Yeah. And that was the first loss that they've had. Actually, the only loss they've had, you know, all season. They've only lost three sets all season, and uh, you know, so that's a really good young Culver team. Obviously, the a lot of those JV Culver kids are are playing you know varsity time as well, yeah. and. They'll, they'll get to that level. And we, we talk about cast and like they're a bunch of old ladies. Yeah. <laughs> they're a team dominated sophomores. by sophomores. Right. Yeah. Well, they are pretty old in, in relative terms. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I had to give a shout-out to, to mm -hmm. them and talk about cast and, you know, um, so that happened since the last time, the cast and Pioneer. Uh, that thing went uh, four sets, cast and won set number yeah. one. And casting, you know, they lost, yeah, won the first set, lost the next three to Pioneer. Then they bounced back and got a nice win, beating LaVille at LaVille in three. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, Coach Schultz's team, I mean, they're, I mean they, they were much improved last year from two years ago, and they made that next step for up this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Maddie Smith, I mean, she can, you know, she's a six-rotation player. She can play for anybody in the area at, uh, you know, hitting, digging, whatever you need from her. Same thing with Isabel Scales, you know. Uh, but I like the, I like the two-setter system with Annie Harsh and Delaney Lowry. I mean, Delaney is a ver is a very athletic setter, and I think the two-setter system is gonna is gonna be beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. 
you know, they, you know they, they were not they were not satisfied just by taking a set off Pioneer. They weren't there to take a set off them. They right. Were to, they were there to win. Right. They they fought it. Mm-hmm. They fought them hard. And, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see as as those girls you know get another year on them next year. Uh, you know where they end up. Obviously, they're not done with this season. Yeah. But, uh, they just you know continue to make everything at Caston uh, athletically better. You know, we saw what they did last year with softball. Saw definitely what they did last year with yeah. with basketball. And, Bailey Harness is another girl who's really stepped up her game. She's a really good server, and you know she she kind of her she doesn't attack often, but when she does, it's timely. Mm-hmm. You know Zippelman uh, from the Libero spot. You know I, yeah. I I saw she had uh, a really good service game against Laville. You know she she can really serve the ball well. As, you know for them as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of good things. Uh, Culver, we talked about them a little bit. You know, they uh, obviously dropped in, in straight sets to Pioneer, but, uh, you know, that's a young team. They they went over to uh, Tipkin Valley on t- Wednesday night. Tuesday, Tuesday night. night. Yeah. Tuesday night and lost to uh, Valley in straight sets. But if you if you watch what is going on with Culver on their JV, uh, you can tell that they've got some really good pieces coming up because mm-hmm. those girls, like I said, are, are playing a lot of JV and varsity right now. Next year, uh, look out because, you know, as they get a year under their belt, there's there's a lot of good girls, and it's not just Barrett. You know, you got uh, Pew, you got Obermeyer. Uh, and Sieber, then, yeah. Well, and yeah, and then the older girls, too, with, yeah. with Sieber and then uh, Lucy Obermeyer mm-hmm. and uh, Garland. Mm-hmm. You know, you get those girls with the younger girls. It's going to take another year, but Coach Barron, I mean, she is she is all about volleyball. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's kind of her life, and you know, where you look at some of these other schools, and and they look at basketball like that. They mm-hmm. look at volleyball. That's that's their thing. Mm-hmm. So it, it'll be interesting to see you know what they can do as as they move up, and you know, you got Winnemac. They're uh, finally getting healthy. Uh, they were at Harrison JV wise on Saturday. And I was talking to Shay Caston, who's you know Heather Caston, the coach Heather Caston's husband, and he said that was like the third time that they had JV match. I mean, they've mm-hmm. just been riddled with quarantines and and things all season long. They right, just, and Alyssa Villanueva has been out, and you know they they faced Triton the other night, and they lose to Triton in three. But that's a really good Triton team, mm-hmm. and we saw Triton lose to Rochester earlier in the year in three. Mm-hmm. Triton's only lost once since then. They're fifteen and three overall. Well, they were so, undefeated before that too. Yeah, it's a very yeah yeah. So it's a very good Triton team, and mm-hmm. but schedule doesn't get any easier, especially in the Hoosier North. And right. they still get to play Pioneer coming up later on Thursday night, and yeah, it's a tough schedule. Yeah, you you don't get any breaks on conference play right. in the Hoosier North. So right because they and they had, had a note lost OD where they didn't have Alyssa either for that one. But so it's just, yeah, the cohesiveness that you can get by having a full complement of players. They just haven't had it quite yet, and I can, I can imagine that Coach Caston's very frustrated. Yeah. I'd be frustrated if I were her. Yeah, and it, it's it's nothing that, you know, you can yeah. you can do. I mean, there's yeah. nothing you can do. If she's frustrated, I, I understand. I, yeah. I empathize. Now, I, I did hear a thing on the radio this morning that uh, Winnemac is going back to wearing the masks in school. You can say what you want about the mask thing. To me, if they say you can wear a mask and you don't have to be close quor- uh, contact quarantined because of it, then I'm all for it. I, I, I don't, you know, whatever. But uh, so, you know, it's it's helped a lot. We've seen that at Pioneer. They've not had any, you know, very many quarantines because of it, because they're wearing the masks. And mm-hmm. I think Rochester's starting to do the same thing again. Right. Uh, so hopefully right. that'll cut down on those quarantines because if you get one kid sick, next thing you know there's 40 kids that are out. Right. People are understanding the ripple effect now. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the Rochester football team, I think it was two positive tests, but two positive tests is two more than two more than it takes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, say what you will about the masks, but yeah. if it or, keeps or them one in more school, one more than it takes. Yeah. yeah. If you keep them in school, then it, mm-hmm. you know. So so hopefully that uh, you know. It, as they move down the line and get closer to, to sectionals for Winnemac, they can at least get everybody there. Yeah. And then see what they can do. Right, right. So Because I think the sectional is going to be kind of wide open. Right. I mean, who's the favorite at this point? I don't know. Right. Maybe Rensselaer? 
Right. Maybe. You know, it's been nominated, obviously, by North Judson in the last few years. But I wouldn't be shocked if Judson won it. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. I haven't seen Hebron play, but they didn't have a good record last year. I, mm. uh, Judson's not a bad-looking team, but they're obviously, you know, <laughs> we saw them in regionals last year, and, and they went six deep, and a lot of those girls graduated. Yeah. So they're working in a lot of new kids. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, if Winnemac can get healthy, who knows what they can do? Right. But they got right. they got to be there. Because I mean, they've they've got a floor general in Kaya Campbell. I'm mm-hmm. just a big admirer of her and the way she plays. Mm-hmm. Any other volleyball? No, that's just about it. I'm just mm-hmm. uh, we're still kind of yeah. Again, the draw is coming up on October 3rd, and the sectional start on October 12th. So there's still going to be some kind of tweaking to go. Mm-hmm. But uh, the yeah the TRC is interesting. I mean, with again, it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. Mm-hmm. You could see some upsets happening. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, you know, like just like what we said with Valley. I mean, they're undefeated right now, but they've still got a lot of really good teams that they got to play. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, and in sectional fifty, can who can challenge Triton? Mm-hmm. That's gonna be the big question. Right. Because the sectionals at Triton this year. Right. That's, that's a tough a, place. Yeah, we'll be that's talking. A tough we'll, place we'll, to play. Yeah, we'll be talking about that as the season uh, moves along. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little soccer. Let's start with the girls. Uh, you were, uh, you know, Rochester had their senior night the mm-hmm. other night, and I, I've covered more uh, Rochester soccer this year because I figured out how to do it. But I unfortunately was not going to stand out in that rain the other night and, and do that. I uh, did, so you didn't have to, Steve. Yeah. Well, you know. You don't have all the equipment that I have that I have to keep dry. And, yeah, but uh, um, they had a nice night. Yeah, they beat Wabash seven to one. Uh, Emma Howdeshall had a hat trick. Um, she also had an assist, to, a really nice touch pass to Amy Williams for a goal. Lily Eaton had a goal. Um, Haley Pesek had a goal, uh, and Kendall Bradley had a goal. Mm-hmm. What a nice moment that was for Haley Pesek to score a senior to score on senior night. Right. She told me that she tore her ACL. She's playing on a torn ACL of a couple uh, from a couple weeks ago. Tore it in practice. It's her second ACL tear. Uh, the doctor said you can play through the rest of the season uh, without needing surgery. I said, "Are you in pain right now?" She goes, "Only when I like, if I have to like bend it awkwardly." But just talking to, just talking to her, she was okay, and she was yeah. Oh my gosh. Playing with a torn ACL. She's a senior. She tore it the first time as a freshman. Yeah, and just tore it again in practice a couple weeks ago. But oh my gosh, yeah, so tough it, kids. When you talk about Lexi Thomas playing volleyball and now Haley Pesic, right? But she gives them another offensive weapon. I mean, she's got a strong foot. Mm-hmm. Emma Hodgson's already set the single season school record for goals with twenty one. <laughs> that's uh, that's amazing too because you know we talked about it at the beginning of the season. She hasn't played since like kindergarten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She said, you know, somebody. Yeah, she. Uh, so she said somebody kind of challenged. She didn't say who it was. We said somebody kind of challenged her and Callie and some of the other girls to come out and play soccer. Boy, glad glad they did that because she has been great. Uh, Jordan Jennings had the previous record of nineteen. Mm-hmm. And we're looking at. I thought Emily King had been up there. Um, this was pre Chantal Rensberger as coach, but the, but I mean, yeah, but still 21, 21 goals is twenty one goals. I mean, mm-hmm. that's impressive. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, you know, Emily Basham is another senior is kind of taking on more of a role. Um, you know, they had a win at Bremen the other day. Macy and Olsen had four assists. And, you know, Macy is, you know, she's so fast on that right flank. And then Amy Williams has great speed on that left flank. And then you've got Kendall Bradley and Lily Eaton kind of patrolling the middle. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of speed and athleticism on the field for Rochester. Mm-hmm. And they just dominated possession mm-hmm. in the Bremen game. You know, then they came back on Monday night. They won at Manchester two to nothing, and that's a Manchester team that has traditionally been a power in the TRC. Mm-hmm. And then you know, they, and then the senior night went over Wabash seven to one, and that locked up a uh, at least a share of uh, the conference for them. Rochester's four and zero. Oh, McConaughey's four and one. McConaughey beat Manchester on Wednesday night to stay alive. So either Rochester will win it outright, or they'll share it with McConaughey. Rochester hosts North Miami ten a.m. Saturday. That'll be the game that decides what piece of the pie Rochester gets or if they get the whole pie. Right. That's a that's a North Miami team that's you know, 
capable. They won two games, and you know it's uh, you know uh, it's a I believe it's a new coach there at North mm -hmm. Miami. So uh, we'll see. Rochester's had pretty good success against North Miami in recent years. Right, but they can't they can't go into it assuming that they're going to win. They can't. No, I'm, but um, I w I would I would assume that Rochester will be the deeper team, and we'll mm -hmm. see if North Miami can hold up for eighty minutes of soccer. Yeah. Um, moving up the uh, Michigan Highway, I guess, yeah. if you will. I should mention, too, Kaylee Woods had a school record. I think she had 17 saves in a game. Mm -hmm. I think I think that was the Man I forget it was the Manchester game or the Bremen game, but that set the school record for saves. Really? Yeah. In a game, yeah. 17. Yeah. Okay. So that's a senior goalkeeper who, you know, Rochester hasn't had to worry about that position for four years. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, Chantal Rensberger was very appreciative of Kaylee because it's... Goalies are hard to find. A lot of girls are, or not, it's not even a girls thing. It's girls or boys. They don't right. want any part of standing in that cage. And Kaylee is, you know, she she not only likes it, but she works at it hard. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who Kaylee Woods is, they they call her George, right? They call her George. Yeah. So George. <laughs> I will someday. I will find out why they call her George. Right. But it's still a great mystery to everybody. Right. Um, Argus Dragons uh, girls, as we we'll just stick with the girls soccer, uh, we saw them. Yeah. You know, how long has that been? A week and a half since they won. Since they beat Rochester, yeah. yeah. And they had another big win over Laville on Thursday night. Yeah, Lady Dragons are still number five in the state. They're still, uh, I mean, they're the heavy favorites in sectional thirty-five. The draw is coming up on Sunday. We'll see uh, who they draw, but you have to like Argus's chances. This is a veteran team with. You know, Lily Hines is just playing tremendous soccer. All, has been playing tremendous soccer all year, and they have her and Ariana Allen. You know, and Emma Dunlap. That's a threesome that is hard to stop. Yeah, and talk about keepers. I mean, you know, it's her first year really back in the goal. But you look at Lizzie Edmonds. I mean, my gosh, she's agile and six foot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so you, you got to think that it's going to be hard to get a shot around her and you're definitely not going to get it over her. Right. Cuz she could basically just reach, you know, up and and stop pretty much everything if she's in the right position. So yeah. She's done a great job. She's done a great job. You know, big weekend coming up, you know, the, the two home games, back-to-back -back home games on Friday and Saturday nights against Westview on Friday and against Bremen on Saturday. And the Westview Rock team that just won uh, the NACC too. Right. Argus and Westview have had a very good rivalry over the years mm -hmm. in girls soccer. Yeah, that's going that's, back to Coach Alcorn's days. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's one of those that I, I can remember. You know, that was a regional round matchup a lot of times. Yeah, with Westview and Argus. Yeah, so if you don't want to go to a football game on Friday night, go to a girls soccer game at Eugene Snyder Field. It was kind of funny last week because I was, I was at Culver doing the Culver Triton football game, and I saw a lot of people from Argus. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like. Well, why are all these Argus people here? So apparently they didn't have anything going on, so they wanted to go watch a football game. Mm -hmm. So now you can go watch a, a soccer game this mm -hmm. week. So Friday night lights at uh, Eugene Snyder Field. I mean, it's when you turn those lights on at that field, it's it's pretty neat. I mean, if you're used to a, a Friday night football game, uh, you know it's it's not football, but uh, boy, it's it's a neat place to play yeah. a football, a soccer game. Yeah, yeah, football game. Yeah, so. Um, so let's uh, bounce around. What well, the Culver Lady Cavaliers are playing yeah. great soccer. They beat New Prairie seven to one on Monday. I mean, that's a school that's what three times their size. Oh gosh, probably four or five. Yeah, you know. I mean, Cassidy Banks is you know a great looking. I mean, great looking freshman along with Maddie Hamilton. Kaylee Hamilton's playing great soccer, and of course Giselle Villegas. I mean, Giselle and Kaylee are kind of the the one and one A on this team in terms of leadership and just doing whatever it takes to win games. This team's this is as good as the Culver Girls program has been in a while. I know we've talked about it in the past, what, about, what four or five years ago, they didn't even have a team. Mm -hmm. And now they're playing great soccer. Great, great credit to Coach A.J. Neese and his program. Sophia Heath, a really good goal, goalkeeper. I mean, they're, uh, I'll be, you know, they, they, you know they, they suffered a heartbreaking loss the other night. Lost to Laville 2-1. to one. Laville scored the game-winning goal with less than two minutes to go. Yeah. But having said that, when, has, when was the last time Culver came that close to beating Lavelle. Right. That uh, that sectional is going to be fun because you, you think yeah. about it, you got Culver, you've got Lavelle, you've got Argus, you've got Rochester. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Yeah. And it's at, you know, that, what I like the best is it's at Argus because uh, you know, Lavelle's a tough place to, you know, Newton Park is a great place, but mm -hmm. it's 
it's a it's a hard place to play because it is so narrow that mm -hmm. you know it really takes away from some of that with the field stuff that you get from Argus and, mm -hmm. and some of those teams. Yeah. Uh, so you know that that draw that mm -hmm. draw is going to be really interesting to see you know who has what path through that sectional. Yeah, the buys are going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Especially you know, does, helpful. Does Culver have to start off with a Louisville? Does Culver have to start off with an Argus? You know, does Rochester have to start off with a Louisville or an Argus? You know, mm -hmm. you know, does does right. Does Argus have to start off with a Laville? Right, we've talked about how Rochester's never scored an Argus before. Rochester's never beaten Laville either. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, you know, this is a year that, you know, could they do it? Yeah. So, anything else on girls' soccer? Hey, congratulations to Coach Mark Gordon and the Lady Vikings at Tippecanoe Valley. Beat North White 7-3 to last week. First win in program history. Yeah, that's always a big thing. First yeah. win. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, uh, they've been, they're, they're not playing in the postseason this year. I think they're going to sit it out, okay. uh, I believe. But, yeah. uh, yeah, so congrats to Coach Gordon. I know he's, to want to take on that, I, I, I give him so much credit. I mean, that's, that's just awesome that he's willing to do that because he had to know it wasn't going to be easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a few of those girls that had played, uh, because they were mm -hmm. co-ed, you know, in the past, but, uh. You know, I would say probably eighty percent of those girls. When's the last time they played, if ever? Yeah. So it, uh, you know, that's a big challenge. They're going to tell some fun stories. I think ten, twenty years from now. Right. So about how they were the uh, pioneers of Valley girls soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Small p pioneers. Yeah. 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 Right. So that would be interesting to see. I mean, it, it's always great to you know, just like Argus, you know, a few years ago when they started their lacrosse program. You know, struggle, struggle, struggle. Picked up a couple wins, and then you never know what's going to happen. You know, in year two, mm -hmm. you get a you get a little experience, you get a little bit more hype, you get a little bit more, uh, you know, depth, and uh, things can take off. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of great female athletes at, at Tippecanoe Valley if you can steer them into soccer right. when younger. Right, and we were saying the same thing about the the boys about six seven years ago. Right, when the boys program got started. That there was kind of an uh, underserved uh, population of boys athletes who maybe just hey I'll I'll try out for soccer if you start a team and now mm -hmm. they've done it yeah. so I'm saying the same thing about the girls a few years later yeah they they've got the the size of school to mm -hmm. to justify that and mm -hmm. you know and the, you talked about uh, Culver having you know good numbers again under Coach Nice. You know, that was one of those things, like we said a few years ago, they didn't have a program for a couple of right. years. And, and I got 20, yeah, 21, something like that. And uh, a solid volleyball program because yeah. it, it was always kind of a back and forth. You know, volleyball would have some numbers, soccer would be down. Soccer would have yeah. some numbers, volleyball would be down. But it seems like both yeah. of them have that, numbers. That's, that's the biggest myth that there's a finite number of athletes and one takes away from the other. Mm. It's a tug of war. No, I, I, I don't think it's that way. I think if you have a good weight, if you have a good feeder system and a good weight training program, I mean, obviously, there are limits to what Culver can do as compared to Plymouth or something can do. But, yeah, you, you can have both. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And once you get that, uh, like you said, you get that feeder system moving through the elementary school, it, it takes some time. But that's kind of what, you know, Coach Barrett has done with that volleyball team. You know, she's started from the ground up, and mm -hmm. those girls are working their way into the high school now. Mm -hmm. So. Well, congratulations, Coach Gordon and the Tippecanoe Valley Lady Vikings uh, boys soccer. Well, you, Rochester Zebras, they've kind of been uh, a little up and down. Up and down, you know, they, they had that loss to, to uh, Peru about a week and a half ago at Peru. And, you know, they had kind of a long team meeting after that, and they talked things over. Then they came out and played a very inspired game against, you know, Valley and beat mm -hmm. them 6-1 to one at home. Uh and then they turn around and they lose to McConaughey on, Mon on uh, yeah, Monday. They lose 3-1. to one. A Very hard-fought uh, game, physical game. Uh, McConaughey had five midfielders. They were definitely keeping tabs on Zach Pickens all night. They didn't want him to get loose. Uh, it was kind of a frustrating game. Some fans got into it. They were yelling at each other. Hmm. Uh, in fact, the ref stopped the game and had uh, to head... Coach Brett Markley from assistant coach Brett Markley from Rochester kind of addressed the crowd, hmm. and he was treated rudely by the fans. Thankfully, they behaved themselves the rest of the game, but it was hmm. 
uncomfortable to be there, but uh, if, for a lot of people. But uh, yeah, it was disappointing uh, from a standpoint of I, I you know, the, the McConaughey's style of play I think really affected Rochester. So yeah, it's just been a year of ups and downs. Uh, you know, I think they're they're right around 500 for the season. You know, Jude Brooks had a really nice goal in that game. Uh, Adam Maroney has been playing great in the back. I mean, he's, you know, he just seems to be everywhere on defense. Uh, yeah, so y you can tell it's, you can kind of tell it's a first-year coach trying to implement his style. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how things go moving forward. Again, it's kind of, it's tough because, you know, the conference is kind of out the door now. You know, um, and they're in such a brutal, brutally tough sectional yeah. class two A. Yeah, we talk about the Rochester Lady Zebras. You know, going yeah. to Argus for sectional, it's just a whole nother world for yeah. Rochester going to uh, Canterbury. Yeah. Should mention Lane Backus. I mean, he's he's been playing great soccer all year as well. And, you mm -hmm. know, really team leader. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was there. We did that Valley game uh, with the uh, the Zebras, and going into that one, I guess let's take a little positive out mm -hmm. of what they've been doing kind of thought, you know, looking at both teams, that it would be a pretty competitive, pretty close game. And, mm -hmm. and Rochester, really, I mean, right out of the gate, they had three goals, and yeah. it was never really close. I mean, they just really kind of handled that one. Right. But Valley bounced back the next night. They beat Peru at Peru. Really? And, uh, and remember, that was, a, I think, three. To, they won 3-2. to two. Remember, that was a Peru team that beat, had beaten Rochester. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, when you talk about John Ruiz, I think he's one of the best players in the area. Uh, Caleb Petgen has got another guy who's got good speed. Um, you know, Gio Ariaga is another pretty, you know, very solid uh, offensive player. They've had some injury problems, uh, but they seem to be getting over that. Um, so, and then Valley came came on. They beat Metro Rage the other night. That's a team full of Northfield and Southwood kids. It's mm -hmm. I call it an exhibition game. I because they're not an IHSA affiliated school, but that's a pretty they play competitive. Metro Rage plays competitive soccer. Valley won four to one. So, mm. uh, yeah, they they bounce back nicely. But it's a team that's uh, you know, pretty fundamentally sound. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if they have the the big time uh, firepower. Uh, and of course, they've they've lost to Manchester, and they've lost to McConaughey already. And that's a pretty good McConaughey team. I mean, let's mm -hmm. give them credit too. So. Uh, and again, Valley's kind of in the same boat, boat as Rochester in that they're in that really difficult 2A sectional. Right. No uh, no free gifts there. Right. So the you could say the draw matters, yeah. but it, it's it's going to come down to, uh, you know, it's brutal. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously Culver's struggling on the boys' side. We talked about Winnemac um, boys. How they've been doing? I know they were doing pretty good there for a while. I haven't really seen much lately. Okay, big game tonight against Laville. Again, we're tape we're taping this on Thursday. Thursday night they play Laville, and that's mm -hmm. going to be the very big game. And then next Thursday, September thirtieth, another big game that will probably decide the, the Hoosier North when they play Caston at home. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, the only four only four teams in the Hoosier North boys soccer. It's Caston, Culver, Winnemac, and Laville. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, Caston got a nice win the other day. They beat Culver two nothing. So Caston's they're also in the conference mix as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Caston will play, still has to play uh, Laville and Winnemag. So uh, the conference race is pretty interesting. But that's a, you know, it's a Winnemag team that's had a nice year. Unfortunately, they were supposed to play Le uh, Delphi the other night, and that game got canceled. So they haven't played in a while. Okay. Yeah, so Caston, you know, we talk about the brutal mm -hmm. Canterbury sectional. Caston is hosting the 1A sectional, and that's a that's a wide-open sectional. You know, Caston, obviously, Winnemac, yeah. Culver. Culver, Winnemac, and North Miami. Yeah, very, uh, very open. Right. Uh, Caston was, you know, they, they played half they played half of a game against North Miami, and then the, uh, Thunderstorms came, so uh, it's hard to know there. Uh but again, you like uh, kids like Jonathan Pacheco and John Aguilar Mendez. They're they're pretty good. You know, it's it's a competitive team, and you know they've got a lot to play for still. Yeah, you say that Cast and Winnemac game is at Winnemac. It's at Winnemac next Thursday, September thirtieth. Okay, yeah, that should be a good one there. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, you know, the Winnemac crew has been talking about getting a soccer game, so we'll we'll see if uh, maybe they can catch that one for yeah. us. So, it'd be an interesting one. Yeah. So.
I believe Laville has won only two games all year. Yeah, they've been struggling, yeah. I know. So. Uh, and then, you know, you move up the road. We talked about the Argus girls and how well they're doing. You, the Argus boys are in some kind of unfamiliar territory. They're they're kind of struggling a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, it looks like they're about it. They, they've got a full complement of players now. Uh, you know, they had that home tournament where they went one and one Zionsville won it. Uh, you know, Argus has got... Uh, you know, they travel to Oregon Davis. Uh, again, we're taping this on Thursday. They're traveling to Oregon Davis Thursday night. And then Saturday afternoon, they make the long trip to Andrean, which should be another interesting game. Mm -hmm. Oregon Davis should be a, a win for the Dragons. That Andrean, boy, that's that's tough. And that'll be on turf, I'm assuming. Right. I, I would think so. So turf kind of uh, seems to be their nemesis this year a little bit. Yeah. But again, the sectional draw is coming up 7 p.m. Sunday night. You've got Fort Wayne Canterbury ranked number one, Fort Wayne Concordia ranked number four, and Culver Academy ranked number ten. All three of those teams are in that sectional. Yeah. And not to mention a pretty solid Manchester team. Yeah. Yep. Who could looks like they could win the TRC again. Yeah. So the the run of uh, sectional championships for the the Dragons is definitely in jeopardy. This they're going to have to they're going to have to pick it up. They're going to yeah. have to pick it up and play at a level that they have not played it yet this season. I yeah. Think. Yeah. For sure. But uh, the uh, Bernard, G, uh, uh, Vladimir uh, Bernard, I think is his name. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's really, you know, he's a foreign exchange student, and he's really uh, given them some some life offensively. Yeah, he he's play, definitely plays at a high skill level. He's listed as a junior, but Todd Vanderbilt said he's only fifteen years old, so really more like a freshman or a sophomore in terms yeah. of age. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Anything else uh, soccer-wise you want to bring up? We'll... No, that's really, yeah, I just wanted to point out that, you know, that, that sectional, that, that two-way boys sectional is just really, really tough. Mm -hmm. But the other two-way boys sectional in the north is really tough, too, when you talk about it. That's the sectional with Mishawaka, Marion, South Bend, St. Joe, and Bremen, so. Yeah, and Bremen's having a really good year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, the Rochester boys, they were supposed to play Bremen at home on Thursday. That has been moved to this uh, Saturday, the twenty sixth. Is so that this Saturday, the twenty fifth, at Bremen, and it's going to be at Bremen. Right. It's not a home game. It's at Bremen. Right. Okay. And that's a very that's a very tough opponent. One of the best opponents on Rochester's schedule. Right. Right. Bremen having a really good year. Yeah. So, all right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk some cross country, some tennis, and some golf, and wrap it up here talking sports with Val tonight. Thanks for tuning in. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service for their clients, presently and for the future. From estate planning and trust, to adoption and family law, to appeals, probate, and more, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at petersonwagoner.com. The Winning Edge is your local provider for all your sport and school athletic needs. From providing customizable sportswear to engraving trophies, The Winning Edge strives to help teams find their edge on the playing field. Call 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. Timbercrest Senior Living Community in North Manchester offers services for all stages of life, including independent living, where you can maintain your independence, assisted living in an environment that will suit your individual needs, nursing and memory care for those in need of full-time care. Licensed professionals provide rehabilitation services, including physical and occupational therapy. Call to schedule a visit at Timbercrest, a place to call home. All right, welcome back here, talking sports with Val as we uh, wrap up our show here tonight. And uh, segment number three, we're going to talk cross country. We're going to talk some uh, golf. We're going to talk some tennis. And uh, I know you were uh, saying there was some cross country stuff you wanted to start off with. Sure. So uh, let's talk some cross country. Let's talk about the new Prairie Invite, the biggest high school sporting event in the state from last Saturday, uh, and the one A girls race. Um, there were 22 teams. Cops won it. Winnemac was second. Pioneer was 12th. Caston had an incomplete team. 
So Winamax, second out of 22 teams. Great job by them. Maggie Smith, um, Kelsey Wegner, and Cadence Hoover all finished in the top 20. Mm -hmm. So they are running great. Pioneer, 12th place, as I mentioned. Violet Montgomery, third among individuals. We're talking about like oh, well over 100 runners yeah. in like 2036. And then the top cast and runner was Delaney Strasser. She finished in 31st place. The Class 2A girls race, that was 30 teams. Um, South Bend St. Joe won it. Rochester was 15th. Valley had an incomplete team. And again, Rochester was down, Rochester down to just five runners. Zoe Seward didn't run. We haven't heard why she didn't run. But they didn't have, now they didn't have Seward, Callaway, and Ochoa. So that's their top three runners who were out. Mm -hmm. um, Lucy Rangel, though, ran 21-51. That's a really nice time, especially if you haven't run that course before. Right. Uh, but Rochester's down to five. Rangel, Kendall Bradley, um, Elena Bodie, Maddie Heinzman, and Greta Barbieri. So hopefully they can get some girls back. But again, it, it's just hard to say with this Rochester girls team where they're at right now because they're just so banged up. If they can, mm. Again, the conference uh, meet is at Valley on Saturday, October 2nd, and the sectional is at Manchester on Saturday, October 9th. So it's all geared toward hopefully getting healthy by then. But again, I have no idea why Zoe didn't run. Kind of running out of time, too, for uh, Ochoa and yeah, Callaway. Yeah, uh, You know, Eric, Coach Eric Lynn has been optimistic uh, mm -hmm. when we talk about Callaway and Ochoa. I have no mm -hmm. idea about Seward, though. Uh, for Valley, um, Chesney Miller ran 20.56. So, again, under 21 minutes. Uh, she's going to have the record book by her t <laughs> by herself. School record is 20.40, so right there. Yeah. She's she's already got it right. Yeah, and and then like the three like, fastest like times. Like the four, yeah, four, four, fast, four yeah. fastest times. Uh, you yeah. said uh, uh, Manchester was eighth, McConaughey was thirteenth. Mm -hmm. So those will be the girls' teams that will be the biggest threat to Rochester at conference, assuming that Rochester gets somewhat healthy by then. Yeah, you said Violet ran a twenty thirty six. Mm -hmm. So that was just off of her. I think what twenty nineteen is her PR. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said that's just a, a brutal course hilly wise, right? Yeah, it's. So. When you have a course that has a thing called Agony Hill on it, yeah, yeah it speaks yeah. for itself. Kylie Ferris has been running very well for Pioneer as well this year. Yeah, she's she seems to be uh, coming in not too far behind Violet most of yeah, the Yeah, usually in the high tw like in the mid twenty twos, I think usually around there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Violet's just a sophomore. Kylie junior or senior? She is a senior. Senior this year, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, yeah, some good stuff there uh, on the boys' side. On the uh, boys' side, let's see the uh, hold on here. Um, Twenty out of twenty-nine teams in the Class A boys race, South Central won it. Pioneer was eighth, Winnemac was thirteenth, and Caston was twenty-first. But we should mention Austin Day of Caston was third overall, seventeen thirty-two. That's a great time. Yeah. Uh, so about the Pioneer pack, that's been a really solid pack all year. When you talk mm -hmm. about Meyer, Dot, Baker, and uh, Brook and uh, Cooper. I think the Pioneer boys are going to be right right in the mix for the Hoosier North boys title when they get together at Winnemac on October 2nd. Good. Um, yeah, so that new prayer was last week, so that means uh, CMA this week? I mean CMA this week. That's the second biggest meet. That's the other one. This, this is going to draw uh, even more, fewer schools, but from a greater geographical. You've got mm. kids, teams coming from the Cincinnati area, teams coming from the Chicago area, mm -hmm. and even a team or two from Michigan. Mm -hmm. I mean, all coming down. It's uh, just having that meet last year. It's great to have it back. Yeah, that was always uh, one that you know the the night before and the the morning of. You know, watching the the vehicles go by. You know, when we used to live on ten there. Mm -hmm. You know, just okay. Where's that one from? Where's that one from? Yeah. Where's that one from? Where is that school at? You yeah. Know? And and it's it's kind of hard to believe the number of schools that come in on Friday night. Right. Because they're so far away. And yeah. I, I assume that the, the academy, you know, they have the space. I don't know what they'll do this year, obviously. But, you know, in the past, they probably put them up in, in different places and kind of just camped out, I would assume. <laughs> yeah. They got that old gym there with the, with the courts and everything. I don't know if they camp out in there or what. but Yeah. Uh, for the at New Prairie, it's all done by school size. There's A, double A, triple A. You can run at a higher class if you would like. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes teams will break up their team, just say, We'll take our top two runners and put them in the AAA race and have our, the rest of our kids run in, their, mm -hmm. in our own race. Uh, at Culver Academy, it's uh, similar but different. They have what's called open and closed. Mm -hmm. It's not by school size, but closed, I think, is limited to schools like, uh, like uh, I, I forget if the enrollment cap was something like 800 or 1,000. But at the same time, if you want your kids to run in the open race, which is you know where 
Carmel's going to be at mm -hmm. in Columbus North and all those schools. You, you can move your kids up to that if you would like. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a reserve race for girls and boys. And, and, then, there's, and then there's a freshman sophomore race. So it, it's just nonstop racing. It starts at 845 and mm -hmm. it just goes on. It's, it's a pretty neat event. Yeah. And it'd be interesting too because it's been pretty wet this week. So it's supposed to be drying off. But we'll see how that, because yeah. I've seen that course before when it's wet, and it gets kind of brutal. Right. We we still had, yeah, I remember a couple of years ago in Mallory Hyatt, I mean, that she went in something like 2005, and that was, or 2001, and that was just incredible that she put that time up, because, I mean, that, she, I mean, they were, everybody there was just knee-deep in mud. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, I remember it was just a terrible rainstorm the Friday night before, so, yeah, I'll be curious to see what kind of shape the course is in Saturday morning. Yeah, because a lot of that is is you know down by the lake, and and it's it's not much higher than the lake level, and so if it's rained as much as it has the last few days, it, it takes a while to dry off. So yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting. Now for the uh, class double A boys, uh, there are thirty teams. Lowell won it. Rochester was fifth. Culver Academy was eighth. Manchester was tenth, and Valley had an incomplete team. Now, I mentioned Culver Academy and Manchester, even though they're not in their. Uh, in our RTC area, because those will be teams that Rochester will see at the sectional, and of course they'll see Manchester as well at the conference. But again, the Rochester pack has been so good this year. Mm -hmm. Peyton Hyatt, 1747. Dylan Steininger, 1752. Chris Rohr, 1807. West, West Steininger, 1845. And now you've got Adrian Ochoa coming up, 1920, mm -hmm. which is, I think, a PR for him. So if you get that fifth guy up, and that's what well, that just seems to happen in cross country, where if you've got three or four. You got a good pack of three or four guys that they always seem to just lift that fifth guy yeah. and bring him with. And if Adrian can run nineteen twenty consistently, or even get faster than that, boy, that's going to be huge uh, down the road. I still have to think that Wabash is going to be the favorite of the TRC. But if Rochester pulls off times like that, and again, you have to think they're going to get faster over time as the running conditions get better. You have to think this team's got a shot to make semi state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've uh, they've definitely been keeping together in those races, and, and it's it's really paying off. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Valley. Uh, we should mention the Valley boys. Evan Myers, nineteen fifty seven. He's had a great year. Mm -hmm. Any other cross country news? No, that's it. I mean, we're we're really headed. To, you know, it's, it's definitely the we we weather conditions are going to be a lot more favorable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, a very warm first few weeks. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, it's it's cooled off. It's going to warm up a little bit. It sounds like it's supposed to be really nice for the weekend. Just be uh, a matter of what the lingering effects of the rain that we've had all week is going to be on the academy course. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, you want to switch over some uh, golf? Yeah, I was at Warsaw for the sectional. At uh, Technically, it was Winona Lake. Warsaw is the host school, but it was Stonehenge Golf Club in Winona Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, Northwood won it for the fourth straight year. Um uh, Plymouth was second, and Warsaw was third. So those are the three teams that advanced. Uh, Valley was fourth, and Rochester was sixth. They each had one individual who advanced. Madeline Weaver from Valley shot an 87. Uh, she advanced against the top three teams and top three individuals on non-advancing teams. Madeline had the top score among girls on non-advancing teams. And Ava Thomas of Rochester shot a 90, and she also advanced. Mm -hmm. So Madeline with an 87 and Ava with a 90, and they both advanced. And... Uh, you know, again, the Rochester Valley the rivalry is not really a rivalry in girls' soccer. It's a very, very girls' golf. It's a very, very friendly rivalry. Mm -hmm. Coaches know each other. Co players know each other. They share the same home course. They're very good friends with each other. Avon, I found out that Avon and Madeline had been golfing at youth tournaments for years. Yeah, so they took a picture together. We, yeah, so, we, yeah. yeah, we put their picture in the, in the, yeah. in the, on the website. Um, you know, Stonehenge is a, it's such a difficult course. It's really long with really fast greens. And that, you know, the, the water hazards just, they, they're just very intimidating. I mean, these aren't little streams. They're big lakes, and you've got to hit it over them. Uh, there's one in the front nine, and then the one in 18, and just gets a lot of girls. Um, but uh, so, uh, you know, Peyton Moore, I felt bad for her. I mean, she had a 97, she had a 54 in the front nine, which kind of, you know, came back and shot a 43 in the back nine, but the 54 in the front nine just yeah. killed her. Uh, you know, you look at Valley, I mean, Molly Moore already shot 93, just missed going by three strokes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kane Smollett, though, had maybe an off day. Lily Ald had an off day after both of those girls made the all-conference team and had a great conference round. But 
Again, that's a tough, tough round, and it really helps to have course experience there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because you know Northwood. I mean, they, Northwood's only won the sectional four years in a row. They had, and they Sybil Stilson of Northwood was a sectional medalist for the third year in a row. Hmm. And in fact, Northwood had the three lowest golfers, three lowest scores for the third year in a row. Wow. Three lowest scores for the third year in a row: 72, 75, 77. The same three. Uh, no, different three. Different three. Wow. So congratulations, Coach Adam Yoder and his team. His team dominated that section one by twenty nine strokes. That is a that yeah. is a route, right? Yeah. In, in golf terms, so kudos to them. But uh, you know, Rochester, they graduate again. The five the five girls who golfed for Rochester on Saturday, uh, none of them were seniors. Uh, unfortunately, Kat Rensberger missed the tournament with a short, right arm injury, and the other senior, Reagan Becker, didn't golf. So all no seniors among the five who golfed. So they'll all be back next year when you talk about Ava Thomas and um, Peyton Moore, when you talk about Delaney Barkman, when you talk about um, Savannah Eccles, when you talk about Avery Broyat, they'll all be back. Valley only graduates one of their five. Cheney Canada graduates. You know, Cheney was the number five player, but I was talking with Coach Thad and he goes, she's definitely our leader. You know, mm. she, she's, her energy and her positivity really helps out the rest of the girls. But again, you know, the, the four that would be back when you talk about all – you know, Moriarty, Weaver, and Malat. I mean, they'll all be back. So, yeah, I mean, the future's bright for our area golf teams. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had another team that actually uh, advanced through as a team. And meanwhile, at the uh, Twin Lakes sectional on Monday, Winnemac finished second and advanced. Yeah. Uh, so congratulations to Coach Rodebush and his team. I think it's only the second time in school history they've advanced as a team to the girls' regional. I mean, the boys have done it many times over the years, but this mm-hmm. is... That was great. I mean, you know, Logansport went up with 364. I think we had mentioned, I don't know if we had mentioned this, Logansport uh, got moved from the Western Sectional to the Twin Lakes Sectional by the IHSAA. And in their first year at the Twin Lakes Sectional, they won it. Mm-hmm. It's their first sectional title since 1992. Yeah, I saw that. Winnemac was second. Kankakee Valley was third. Again, this is a Winnemac team that's, uh, I don't know if they have one superstar player, but they've got just a nice, solid group of solid players. Kira Basinski shot 89. Mm-hmm. Bianca Huizar has been playing great. Janet Calfee has been playing great. Olivia Link has been playing great. It's, it's, you know, it's a team having a great year. Yeah. Uh, what I see you said, Ashland Brook was uh, just a few sh- uh, strokes short of uh, making Right. Two pioneer, two pioneer players. Ashland Brook shot a 100. Emily Sch- Schmaltz shot a 103. Unfortunately, 97 was the cutoff for those three top three girls who advanced yeah. as individuals. So Ashland only missed by three strokes. I think, I think she finished 16th. If you, if you just looked at every single score, I think out of Ashland was like 16th overall. Yeah, not bad for just picking up a set of clubs this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So seems like she can just you know pick up and do what whatever kind of she wants, right? Yeah, she so. sh- she tries some other sports. Yeah, I know. I don't. Know. Maybe she's has she ever played basketball before? <laughs> yeah, let's see what she does there. So, um, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff, and you know it's it's hard to believe that uh, Ashland likes it when I wear shirts like this. This is a, so. Hopefully, she's watching this. <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, we'll probably mention her name a few times in the upcoming season. Okay. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure she'll get a couple mentions. Mm-hmm. Um, as you said, though, not not a whole lot going on tennis wise because uh, Mother Nature kind of won the week. Yeah, they really did. Uh, Valley was supposed to play Whitco on Tuesday, but uh, I thought they picked an interesting time for a makeup match Friday at 4:30. At the Valley Courts, so watch the Valley te- boys tennis team play Whitco at 4:30, and then once that's over, walk on over to the football field and watch. Interesting. The yeah. uh, Vikings take on Whitco in football. Right, I can all ride the same bus. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure the football boys don't want to ride the bus with the tennis guys, <laughs> though. But uh, yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, nobody really got anything in, did they? Now Rochester was supposed to play Logansport Northwestern, and that's really unfortunate that both of those got rained out because. Uh, helps to play tough opponents as you get ready for right. the sectional in the Culver Academy team that's going to be looming and it's ranked in the top 20 in the state. Their draw next week? Draws Monday night and the sectional starts on Wednesday. Yeah, and they are at Knox this year again? Uh, I believe it's at Culver Academy again. It is back at the academy? Back at the academy, yeah. Okay, okay. I couldn't remember if you said it was or wasn't. I mean, yeah. It's uh, been a lot of changes, obviously. So yeah. If I'm wrong, I'll double check and I'll we'll post it on the yeah, we'll post it on the on the website. But by uh, by this time next week, they might have already played a, a sectional game match. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's a yeah. Assuming the weather's okay, it's going to be a Wednesday Thursday sectional for 
you know, Valley's a five, because it's just a four-team sectional. Valley's in a five-team sectional, so it would be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. You know, Valley, they've already lost to Wawasee this year. They've already lost to Columbia City this year, and both of those teams are in their sectional. And of course, the Tigers from Warsaw also loom there. Yeah, are they at Warsaw? Uh, I believe it's at Columbia City this year. Columbia City, mm -hmm. okay. They get new courts, too, because they got a lot of new stuff up there. I bet they did. Yeah, because new football and new school. And yeah. I, I would assume yeah, yeah. they probably wouldn't do all that other stuff new and make them go to the old ones. Yeah. So that would be interesting. So, all right, anything else before we go? No, that's just about it. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, tune in. We've got uh, Pioneer hosting Triton coming up next. We've got Culver down at Winnemac uh, on the road. And then uh, Tippecanoe Valley hosting Whitco. Hopefully next week we'll be back with some Rochester Zebras football as well. They're off again this week. And uh, we will see you again next week with more Talking Sports with Val. See you. Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Is your bank closing? Are you unhappy with your current bank or financial institution? At First Federal Savings Bank, we've been serving your community for 55 years. And whether you're in need of a home loan, commercial loan, checking account, financial services, or insurance services, we'll be here for you tomorrow. Make the switch today. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best.